Okay, pwede ka na magsimula. Hello class, before we start, let us pray. Dear God, bless us in our school today. Help us grow in love and kindness, more like Jesus every day. Amen. So, before we start, is there any absent today? Very good. You have a complete attendance. Uh, do you still remember our lesson last meeting? What is it all about? Okay, very good. Do you have any question about our last that topic? None. Great. Okay. Now, before we start our new lesson, I have a question. How do you learn best or what learning style is more effective for you? Okay, thank you class for your answers. I asked you that question because as an individual, we are different from each other. We have different learning styles. Some teaching strategies may be effective for you and for the others are not. Now, uh, there we go. Our lesson for today, now let's proceed to our new lesson for today. Our lesson for today is about theories of learning. Yes, do you have a question? Pwede ulit. Dire-diretso yan. Sige na. Putang kabahan. I mean, isipin mo na excited ka. Dire-diretso yan. Walang ulit sa demo. Wala pa tayong estudyante. Sige, pag nakabahan ka, you could stop. Pero dire-diretso tayo. Okay? Sige. Hindi ko na ulitin mo. Hindi mo na ulitin. Okay. Now, let us present our new topic for today. Our topic for today is about learning theory. In designing, in designing a course, we have to provide a question for us to to make or to create an effective syllabus. These questions are why do the students need to learn? Who is going to be involved in this process? Where is lear learning to take place? When is learning to take place? What does the student need to learn? What aspect of language needed? This question will help us to make an effective syllabus to our first day. Hutchinson and Waters told in their book that there are three main factors that affect the ESP course design. These are the language description, learning theories, needs analysis. Language descriptions answers the questions what, learning theories answers the questions how, and needs analysis is consistent, consistent in assessing the communicative needs of the learners and the techniques of achieving specific tech teaching objectives. The main focus of our lesson for today is the about learning theories. The starting point to all language teachers is going to be the understanding of how people learn. It is important for us as a teacher, it is important for us to know the how students learn. Yeah. From that from that we can identify the five main factors that may affect the 
Yes, because the scientists learning theories, behaviorism, mentalism, cognitive code, affective factor, and learning and acquisition. First is the behaviorism. Behaviorism is learning as a habit permission according to Pablo and Skinner. It emphasizes stimulus, response, and reinforcement as the basic elements of learning. In behaviorism, learning is regarded as a habit formation. Basic exercise is the, is the pattern practice. In this theory, focuses on shaping behavior through conditioning. I have a question. Do you, do you heard about Pavlov's experiment about dogs. Okay. Very good. Pavlov was a guy who rang a bell to feed his dog. Every time he fed his dog. That's why the dog learned to associate the sounds of the bell with food. So as a result, the dog salivated every time there bell rang, whether it, there was a food or not. That is the example given in the behavioral psychology. We all know that we all know that a person will continue to exhibit certain behaviors if they receive a reward for doing so. And the person will be able to avoid a consequence that he does not want. Another, for example, if my class wants to come early at my class and to participate in my class discussion, I will give them a reward. It can be uh, additional points for their quiz and to those who failed to come early at my class will have a punishment. That is what behaviorism is. Now, next is mentalism. Mentalism, thinking as a rule governed activity. The mentalist learning theory emphasizes the role of the mind in language acquisition by arguing that humans are born with an innate and biological capacity to learn languages. The mind does not just respond to stimulus, it uses the individual stimuli in order to find the underlying pattern or stem in mental in here in mentalism language is an innate or inborn process according to chomsky a child learns his first language through cognitive learning then when chomsky talks about rules he means the conscious rules in a child's minds these rules enables him to make grammatical sentences in his own language. That is what mentalism is. Next is cognitive code. Learners as thinking beings. In behaviorist theory, the learners pretend to be a passive receiver of information, but in cognitive theory, the learners are being the active processor of information. The basic technique associated with a cognitive theory of language learning is the problem-solving task. Here, in cognitive code, language is a process of conscious mental activity. It is the in interpretation or pattern on the data, or in other words, that we learn by thinking and trying to make sense of what we see, feel, and hear. In short, cognitive theory looks at the way people think. And the basic technique that's usually used is the problem-solving task. Diba? In problem-solving, we use our mind to solve and to get the answer. Next is the affective factor. The affective factor learners as emotional beings. Although we are all aware of feelings and their effects on our actions, we invariably seek answers to our problems in rational terms. The importance or the emotional factor, we can represent a cognitive affective interplay in form of learning cycle. As we know, people think, but they also have feelings. We also have feelings. 
the importance of emotional factors is easily seen if we consider the relationship between cognitive theory. The affective factor tells us that learners will learn when they actively think about what they are learning, when they are thinking. Then, in Gardner and Lambert's study of bilingualism, they identified two terms of motivation. Here are the two forms of motivation, instrumental motivation and integrative motivation. Instrumental motivation, learners are not learning the language because they want to, but because they need to. Instrumental motivation is the reflection of an external needs. In the example, cell things pass an examination need to read text. Another example of this is you are you going to work because you want to earn money. The integrative motivation desires on the part of the learners to be members of the speech community that uses a particular language. It's an internally generated one rather than externally imposed need. Ito yung kagustuhan naman natin. It is an internally generated one rather than an extremely need. Example of this is playing basketball because you want the feeling while playing it. The next, yeah. Here are the positive learning cycle. Learner wants to learn. Then learning applies cognitive powers to acquire knowledge. Learning is successful. Learning is co learner's competence develops, increased competence enables learners to learn more easily. Learners see learning as an enjoyable and satisfying experience. Then, let's proceed to the learning and acquisition. Learning is seen as a conscious process, while acquisition proceeds unconsciously. This reflects our view that for the second language learner, both processes are likely to play a useful part and that a good is because We'll try to explode both. Let us first define what is acquisition. Acquisition is getting knowledge unconsciously. Children acquire knowledge from time they were born. For example, we acquire our mother tongue and any language we may learn in our early childhood. Then, how about learning? So learning of a language is the formal teaching methodology that can be seen in form of instruction, explaining the rules of the language. In learning, it is a conscious process. Okay. Last is the model of learning. The only acquire meaning and use when they are connected into the network of existing knowledge. In the act of acquiring new knowledge, it is the learner's existing knowledge that makes it possible to learn new items. Items of knowledge are not equal significance. Some items are harder to acquire but may open up wide, wide possibilities for further learning. Here, do you see the picture? Here are the model of for learning. It is explained through a picture. In the picture, we take the mind as a network of connections that looks like a road map. Individual houses, towns, and villages represent bundles of knowledge. In learning, in learning, in learning process for the sake of learning, we have to build connection. For build connections among different things while covering all obstacles that come in this process. In short, model for learning, in order for us to gain new knowledge, we have, we need to have an existing 
developing knowledge that guides us towards various new directions that make it possible to learn new items. Okay. That is that is what a tourist of learning is. Now, to for your evaluation, you will be having an activity. Please get a one whole sheet of paper and answer the following question. Why it is important to learn the different theories of learning? And as a future educator, what teaching strategy you will use in teaching your students? If you're done, please pass it. Please send it to my Gmail account. For your assignment, have an advanced reading about needs analysis. Mom, I'm not. 